Hello everybody, A.L. Levy here for Nail the Mix and URM Academy, and I am going to unbox Lightyear by the story so far, which was mixed on the album by Eric Valentine, but produced by Mr. Sam Pura. And Sam Pura is coming on Nail the Mix to talk all about this production and how he would go about mixing it and everything that was done prior to the mix to set it up because this one is an intense, intense session. So let me show you real quick that there are no plugins. Some very basic levels. I mean, very basic, nothing really. And just take a look at how much stuff is in here. Lots of drums, other drums, percussion, tambourines, shakers, all kinds of bass. Uh, I believe these would be different microphones. I'm not sure what this is. I think it's probably a different bass. Lots of guitars. And I mean, uh, this is a... I'm not, I'm not sure I understand exactly. We're going to find out on Nail the Mix exactly how we did this. But I believe that each one of these guitars is eight microphones summed down to a stereo track left and right. Uh, pretty intense, right? And I believe that that's what he did for all of these. But uh, just know the moral of the story. He's going to explain it. But these are multi-miked pre-summed guitars a lot of work went into this I'm not sure what back mask one and back mask two are and lots of vocals and some effects real quick just everything together before we get into it sounds kind of like this All right, let's check out the drums. And I heard that there were multiple drum sets used on this record, so I don't know if these are two different drum sets, but we'll find out. Let's start with the what seems like the first drum set. Uh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Great start. Let's uh, hear what these sound like. I'm going to guess that that's a whole other drum kit, but I don't know. We'll find out. And got a fairly, you know, standard setup as kick in, kick out mic, snare top and bottom, uh, toms one and two. It, it, what, what I don't know here is if this is like a tom top and tom bottom that are summed down, you know, the reason I'm saying that that's a possibility is because of those guitars. And Sam likes to go nuts with, uh, with his productions. We've got a close room, a hallway room, and three mono rooms, overheads, and hats. Let's just check out what we got. This is a kick in. Nice, powerful kick. Those have really good energy to them. I'm going to say that you probably do not need samples for this. Uh, you should really be able to make this sound great with what you've got. There's nothing missing here. 
All right, let's check out the close room. That is an awesome sounding close room. Wow. There's so much you can get out of that. It, it, that's got such a great detail on the kick, but also the symbols and it was well, very well balanced. That's a great kit image. Let me check the overheads. God, that's sick. Great miking job, Sam. So punchy, yet so much power, yet it sounds nice and roomy, but close also. But I mean, I haven't brought the hall in, but that's some good stuff. Let's check out this hall. Oh, yeah, you can squash the hell out of that mono room. Oh, you can get some good slap on the kick out of that one. You can craftfully really enhance the kick on with that third mono room mic. Sounds great. Let's hear the second one. I want to know where that is. That sounds like a Tom mic. So these room mics are really, really unique and... I can tell that they were very strategically placed to give you stuff that's not in the, you know, not in the close mics. So, for instance, you want to get more, more slap on the kick, add three. Just want it to sound crazier, add hall room and turn it up really loud. But no, you can probably distort the hell out of this or compress the hell out of this and turn it down and have some good glue. Good punch to the shells right there. This is great. Everything you need to mix a great drum sound is provided herein. All right, let's check this out now. See if it sounds like the same drums even. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that these are not the same drums. Slightly different room options, too. You've got two mono rooms, the close room and the hall room. But as you can see, like these rooms, just like the other rooms, they're very, very different and they address different parts of the drums. So you can skillfully make this sound however you want. This is a great, great use of rooms. Mm -hmm. 
Now, let me just say that just because we gave you lots of rooms doesn't mean you have to use all of them. You know, just saying. Okay, so we've got tambourines and shakers going for what looks like the entire song. I'm not sure if uh, these are supposed to go through the entire song and or if it's just laid down for the entire song and then gets uh, brought in and out. But I mean, why not? What's going on here? Let's play that with the drums. So it's highlighting the snare right here, the tambourine is. I think this is supposed to go the whole time because it does pause actually right here where the drums pause. And if you listen to these percussion tracks with the drums, they, uh, they just sound like another part of the drum set. Just adding that movement. Now listen to how much more movement there is when I add these in versus when I take them out. Is already awesome without these, but it just adds great motion to the whole thing. Killer use of percussion. All right, let's see what we got bass wise. Looks like we have. A base DI going through a dark glass, a base DI going through a compressor, and then two amps. Let's see what's different here. Yeah, sounds like a totally different bass or just a totally different setup. I love it when producers take the time to get totally appropriate and different sounds for different parts. I know that a lot of mixers will do that, almost like a different scene for a different part of a song, like a, a different snare sound or a, a different processing on a chorus, things like that. But it's best when those decisions start at the source, um, when the production itself uh, is just created in a way to where that sonic variety is there from the inception that already that that makes the vision of the producer and the vision of the band that much clearer for the mixer mixer has less to invent i was here this bass with these drums or these basses with these drums
Very well done. All right, let's see what we got here. We'll start with Will One. sounds great so obviously will is one guitarist and kevin is the other they start playing together now again i'm not sure exactly what this combination of sounds is but i am pretty sure that this is eight microphones right here All right, that's great. Just like uh, with the bass and using the two different drum sets, the you know you could have these these guitars just going the whole way through, or your standard left and right, and it would be fine. But this is so intricate and it's so well put together, and it highlights just the way that the song is evolving. So, for instance, notice. I mean, this is the same riff, but. When it goes to verse one, that's when these doubles come in. When it goes to the pre-chorus, that's when uh, the it sounds like another amp comes in. It just it keeps on evolving as the song evolves. It's not just one tone that goes through the structure of the song. It is morphing with the song. Share that with some drums and bass. This is such a great production. It, I mean, this is going to be a tough mix because there's so much going on. But this production is like a map. It is a map of exactly what it needs to be. The, this is some phenomenal stuff. And this is uh, some real production. I, I'm very inspired to, to see someone working like this because, uh, frankly... This is how I used to record guitars on my own music. It's, uh, I love this. All right. Let's keep going. Let's see what this back mask stuff is all about. Well, actually, I'm going to ADD for a second. I want to see what this Kevin stuff is during the chorus. <laughs> Lush. All right, let's hear this back mask. What's that? And they're 
not screwing around, are they? God, these are great sounds. So back mask sounds like some sort of reverse effect. AC is clearly an acoustic. reminds me like of some of those great arrangements that 90s bands like Radiohead used to put out where it's just like an orchestra of lush guitars and morphing harmonies and feels this is great got vocals Let's see what we got so it looks like we've got a main vocal and then the main vocal double okay this is just part of the main vocal as well stereo doubles low vocals and harmonies all right let's hear what we got let's check out the the mains and the doubles come down on me i won't be anyone else clip time with me yep this guy knows what he's doing all right, let's check out this stuff. I'm stepping outside now, I'll leave you behind now. I finally came down, write it all, let it all out. How did I get here? Feels like a lie here. So the vocals are doing the same type of morphing in the arrangement that the guitars and the bass and the drums do. This is really, really well done. I'm stepping outside now, I'll leave you behind now. So, just notice how, as the song goes from, I guess, the soft chorus to the second verse, which I guess is the first verse is instrumental. Um, So from the verse of the pre-chorus to the chorus, just check out how the vocal arrangement changes. Starting here. Come down on me, I will be anyone else. Time with me, ride with me, chasing my thrills. He's leaving me, even you and everyone else. It seems to get worse, but who can really tell? Stepping outside now, I'll leave you behind now. Finally came down. And so right there were the, the low vocals and the harmonies come in, that's where that, you know, that Will's third guitar comes in, for instance. This is really, really well done. Like, good arrangement, guys. Let's see what's going on here. There is a lot of stuff. What are these effects? Real quick. Alright, you know what we're about to do? We are about to listen to this vocals only because this sounds like there's a lot going on. How did I get here? Feels like a lie here. I should have no fear. Yeah, my hands are slick. How did I get here? Feels like a lie here. I should have no fear. Yeah, my hands. Everything I said earlier about the production style and how it reminds me of the great 90s bands and 
I said morphing about eight different times. I don't want to say morphing again, so I'm not going to say morphing again. But I love the way that this morphs. And uh, the vocal production does match the instrumental production. Let's check it out. I'm going to put guitars only with these vocals. How did I get here? Just like a light year. I should have no fear. Yeah, my hands are slick. How did I get here? All right, so there you have it. Now, a couple things that I have to say is that, look, this song is short. I mean, this is technically part of the song, but for all intents and purposes, the song is about three minutes and ten seconds long. Even shorter, because it comes in at no, okay, yeah, it's about between 3 minutes and 10, 3 minutes and 30, depending. It's a short song, and there is a lot going on in those 3 minutes. There's a lot going on. This is the same amount of information that you'll get in a song two and a half times this length. And there are so many sonic options that you can really take this in a good direction, or you can drive this car right off a cliff but they laid it out for you uh, this is a great map and now you just need to interpret that map and nail that mix so this is february 2019 nail the mix with sam pura and the story so far i am al levy happy mixing